Bleh. <laughs> Mystery of the Wax Museum from 1933. Within the genre of horror, there are many sub-genres, and this would be the first in the subgenre of wax horror. I think I just coined that. Directed by Michael Curtis, starring Faye Ray of King Kong fame, and based on the book, The Wax Works by Charles S. Belden. The plot, you got a sculptor named Igor, but he pronounces his name Igor. He's got a wax museum. It's in, it's in dire straits financially. This wax museum, it's not like wax museums that would come later, and it's not like wax works. Wax works, uh, the wax works movies from the 80s, two phenomenal features, both starring Zach Gilligan from Gremlins. Directed by Anthony Hickox, who's also in Return of the Living Dead 3, and directed Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth. Sort of capitalize on the concept and elevate it in a really fun, B-movie, cheesy horror kind of way. If you haven't seen Waxwork and Waxwork 2 Lost in Time, you must. So, Igor's partner, he's really not happy with how the Wax Museum is doing, which, by the way, features wax recreations of classical sort of things in history. You got Joan of Arc, Marie Antoinette, stuff like that. All of the wax statues are played by real actors to give the wax figures a super close approximation to looking real. And it really does add sort of a spooky quality, even though you can kind of see people move from time to time. It's hard to hold in incredibly steel. Watch me try. <laughs> I can't say I can't do it. So the partner, he wants to burn down the wax museum for insurance money, $10,000 insurance money in 1921. That's a lot of money. Igor fights him on it. Igor gets horribly scarred and burned by the fire. Now he's in a wheelchair. He wears a wax face to disguise himself. And he's been stealing bodies from the morgue and incorporating them into his wax sculptures. It's 12 years later, New York City. The previous wax museum was in London. And Igor has been stealing these bodies and perfecting these sculptures because he's opening a brand new wax museum. We see this ghoulish looking malformed person stealing bodies from the morgue, but we're not supposed to know that it is Professor Igor, as he calls himself. Igor. He's Igor. Yes, I start the plans. And then you have Faye Ray. She's a hot to trot reporter. She's investigating everything. Charlotte Duncan is her name in the in the thing. We'll just call her Faye Ray. And Faye Ray is going to get to the bottom of this thing. I love, love, love watching old movies like this. One, they're always really short, which is nice. There's nothing like surfing through a 70 minute feature. Two, they capture, when I watch these things, like it blows my mind as I realize that I'm watching a movie where everybody is dead. Everybody has been dead dead for years. Everybody that's on the screen is no longer alive, not physically possible to be. And that they are they are forever encased in celluloid carbonite for my viewing pleasure. It's really trippy, man. You're seeing a dramatized slice of life from the 1930s. And that's probably the trippiest part of all. That's why I really love watching these old films. You really feel like you are being transported to a different time and place. It's so interesting to see the sets, the technology, the architecture, the social norms, all of which are vastly different from what we would have today. What I really love about Faye Ray's character is that she's like this scrappy, spicy, driven reporter trying to solve this mystery of what happened to this famous starlet's body. She supposedly unalived herself, but in reality, it was Igor in his deformed form stealing the body for his wax museum. And he's got like these sculptor minions that like sculpt everything for him. It's great, man. And noticeably missing from the film is any kind of score. So you have these really intense, awesomely choreographed fight and action scenes at the end, but there's no music. You have some foley. It's really kind of jarring. It's very easy to notice that it's not there. Does it make the film worse off? No, but it's another example of how storytelling and movies were different at that time. I mean, this is the dawn of cinema. It's not actually the dawn of cinema. Cinema's been around for 30-ish something years, but I would say that the 30s are the beginning of what would become modern motion picture conventions, right? Sound, color, foley, 
score, by this time composition has changed. The movie culminates with the deformed Dr. Igor climbing up high. He's about to pour wax onto Faye Ray to make her into the new Marie Antoinette, and he himself falls into the vat of wax. And this is sort of like the iconic trope that happens in every wax movie that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. It's great, man. As I mentioned, the movie was remade a bunch of times. Most famously with House of Wax with Vincent Price in 1953. But you also had Mill of the Stone Woman, Chamber of Horrors, and from 2005, House of Wax featuring Paris Hilton. Which from what I hear is actually a very good remake. I have not seen it. Maybe I'll save that for next year. On the tech side, Mystery also holds the distinction of being the last film in the Technicolor 2 color process, which featured a two-color system that combined separate photography with red dye and green dye to make a very limited spectrum of color. This was soon replaced by the Technicolor 3 color system, which used, I believe, red, yellow, and green. And that's what films like Wizard of Oz was filmed on. This film, in its original aesthetic, was considered lost for many, many years and got a proper restoration about 20-something years ago. And that's the version that I watched on HBO Max. I gotta hand it to HBO Max for having stuff like this available for streaming. Definitely something I would like to revisit in the future. You know what else is interesting, too? This was pre-code. So what does that mean? Pre-code is in reference to the Hayes Code which really didn't become heavily enforced until 1934. This film was made in 1933. So you have stuff like illicit drug use, sexual innuendos, promiscuity, prostitution, violence, infidelity, and even abortion. It's crazy. And then they instilled this code where you couldn't have any of those things, including homosexuality and interracial relationships. Fuck, man. It's fucking insane. Also, you had anti-heroes, like gangsters, like Scarface and stuff, Little Caesar. They were heroes, even though they were committing evil deeds. All of that stuff changed with the Hayes Code. And this is one of those gems, man. It really kind of plays like a genre. I mean, it's a genre film. They're really good. There's a lot of really good old ones, man. And they're all worth checking out. Ah!